The Starship launch tower at Pad 39A in Florida is complete, but pieces for the next tower have been spotted at Roberts Road. Where will the second tower be built? In this flyover, we'll cover that, plus all the other developments since our last flight, including the construction on the Starship launch pad at 39A, the impact of Hurricane Ian, and a rare look at some New Glenn hardware inside of one of Blue Origin's buildings. Let's get right into it, starting as always with Roberts Road. Beginning with the Star Factory, its expansion continues, with more of the roof now being complete. More walls are going up, and the foundation looks nearly complete. If you look closely, it even appears as if some cranes are already installed inside the structure, but it's hard to tell for certain. Moving to the north of Star Factory, at the chopstick and QD arm assembly area, we can see hydraulic actuators staged next to the chopsticks where they will soon be installed. These are the parts that allow the chopsticks to do the catching and stacking work for which they are designed. Also, there's a new retention pond next door that probably came in handy during Hurricane Ian. Speaking of Hurricane Ian, you can see there are new berms around the other retention ponds on site, which were probably built to prevent them from overflowing and flooding the nearby buildings and construction site. Luckily, we're not aware of any major damage to either Roberts Road or any other facilities at the Cape, including SpaceX's Falcon 9 and Starship launch sites at LC-39A. Moving to the east, at the tower construction area, new tower parts have appeared, which is curious, mainly because the tower at 39A has been topped out. So these parts are for a new second, third tower? One column in particular can be seen with rails on it, which further confirms it is for yet another Starship launch tower with chopsticks. Where will it be built? Well, there are three options. There's Launch Complex 49, the proposed new launch facility SpaceX wants to build to the north of pads 39A and B, and just to the south of Playa Linda Beach. This site has not seen any work started on it yet, and it still needs to go through environmental review. For this reason, I don't think the next tower will be built at LC-49. The next potential location for the third tower, the second at the Cape, is SpaceX's LZ-1 and 2. It's possible that in order to protect historic pad 39A, SpaceX will, at least initially, launch Starship from there, but land them at a dedicated tower at LZ-1. The problem here is that LZ-1 and 2 are actively in use for RTLS landings of Falcon 9 first stage boosters. And when I say actively in use, I mean it. There are around four RTLS landings in the next few months, including at least one Falcon Heavy with the iconic dual side booster RTLS. That'll be on the classified USSF-44 mission. As we've seen in Boca Chica, it can be, um, tricky, let's say, to build out a site while actively using it. Despite that, I still think a dedicated catch tower at LZ-1 and 2 makes sense. It could very well be the location of the next Mechazilla. That said, the chopsticks currently under construction at Roberts Road are once again getting catch hardware as I mentioned earlier, so just a small reminder that I could be completely wrong. The final option for the next tower to be built is at the rumored Starship launch site at Slick 47. There's not much we know about this proposal right now beyond some faint rumblings, but just as background, Slick 47 is nestled between SpaceX's Slick 40 and ULA's Slick 37, where the final two Delta IV heavy missions will launch from. Again, for this site, we haven't really heard much publicly. At least for LC-49, we have gotten some press releases from NASA about it. So I think, in summary, I personally rank LZ-1 and 2 as most likely, LC-49 as second most likely, and Slick-47 as third, keeping in mind, once again, that I could be completely wrong. Perhaps even more interesting is NOAA aerial imagery provided by Harry Stranger of Hangar M that shows pieces of a new orbital launch mount being staged, indicating a third orbital launch mount will be built at the Cape. The second is currently in a state of advanced construction inside Hangar M, but it's basically impossible to get any views of it. So. Where will the next Florida Starship launch site materialize? There's currently nowhere at the Cape where work is underway for foundations of any of this, tower or mount. So it could just be staging tower and mount segments for a future launch site. SpaceX's orbital launch mount is an insanely complex bit of engineering in and of itself. In fact, the orbital launch mount in Boca Chica seemingly still isn't ready to support an orbital launch. Perhaps this is just SpaceX trying to get ahead of the game. Rounding out Roberts Road, the Mega Bay looks ready to start rising out of the ground, with even more pieces staged in and around the building's footprint. The concrete foundations to the north also appear complete and ready to support the buildup of a structure. 
Next, the formerly dirt parking lot to the north of Hangar X is being paved, along with more pavement going down on some of the surrounding dirt roads. Meanwhile, what could be a fairing half is next to the hangar. And finally, the booster parked outside of Hangar X is most likely B1060-14. 1060-14 will be used on the launch of the dual-stack Galaxy 33 and Galaxy 34 satellites on October 6th, which may have already happened by the time you watch this. Speaking of Falcon 9 launches, let's move on to the historic Launch Complex 39A. During our flyover, a shiny new booster, Booster 1077, is on the pad with Crew Dragon Endurance on top. Just don't look at that meatball. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Ahead of the Crew 5 mission, which successfully launched on Wednesday, October 5th. It's not all Falcon 9 at 39A though. Moving over to the Starship side of the complex, the launch tower has had its final section stacked on top of it, meaning it's now at its final height. Is it just me or did that feel fast? The new propellant tanks that were shipped from Boca Chica and recently delivered to the Cape have been installed near the big LOX tank that's currently under construction next to the tower. From those same NOAA photos that Harry Stranger posted, we can see that the hexagonal mystery structure has pipes sticking out of it, likely indicating that it will be for flowing a lot of some kind of fluid. Logic dictates that that fluid will most likely be water for a sound suppression and deluge system. There's a hexagonal cutout around the base of the launch mount legs, so it seems like the hexagonal structure could end up here. Maybe the pipes that stick out push water up around the legs and under the booster during ignition. In support of this, we can see a retention pond next to the orbital launch mount, potentially for use retaining this water. Though right now it just looks to be holding runoff from Hurricane Ian. Continuing with more of the Starship infrastructure at 39A, piping from the methane tank farm to the tower now looks much more complete. Once again, in the NOAA pictures, we can see how the pipes and wires from the tower are routed from each side of the tank farm. Finally, red truss sections appear visible between the giant LR11350 crane and two smaller tents to the south. These are likely to be used for chopstick assembly. In case you don't remember, at Starbase they used a similar approach last year where they mounted a two truss... Was it really last year? Where they mounted a two truss system to aid with the mating of the chopsticks and carriage system. Moving on to Port Canaveral, Megan is back in port after weathering Hurricane Ian at Port Everglades, along with Shannon. Shannon, however, went to Tampa to support the Crew-5 launch in case of an abort, as well as to support the splashdown of Crew-4 next week. Meanwhile, both drone ships and Doug were out at sea supporting two different missions, while Bob and Booster 1073 were in port after coming back from supporting the Starlink Group 4-35 mission, though their arrival was delayed due to Ian. You can also see two recovered fairing halves on the wharf. One interesting thing about these two fairing halves is that they clearly show not for flight marked in red on them. They sometimes have fairings there at the port for sea trials, so that could be the explanation for this. Next up, at Blue Origin's Exploration Park campus, which was incredibly busy as we can see the parking areas overflowing, we got a rare look at a new Glen segment inside of the surface coating facility. How cool is that? This looks like it could potentially be an interstage, and is another sign that Blue are making excellent progress towards the first full New Glen flight stage. Elsewhere on site, the Tucat building has gained a finished door, just as we feared. Oh well, perhaps we'll still manage occasional views inside of it like we did at the surface coating facility. Down at the southern side of the campus, ground preparations continue in the middle of the site where current plans lead us to believe that there will be a composite assembly building, a reef pathfinder building, hundreds of parking spaces, and with more buildings planned in the future. The warehouse expansion, of course, continues to make good progress, with some of the sections now pre-assembled on the ground and teams actively working on the structure. Over at Blue Origin's Launch Complex 36, the NOAA aerial imagery once again comes in handy. As noted in some of our previous flyovers, there are some structures being built at the base of the ramp. These could possibly be some sort of structure that's part of the transporter erector system. Moving north, we get a really good look at the tent area, which is where we assume Jarvis test structures are being built. We can see barrels and domes outside of the tents, as well as the transport stands for them. Last up for Blue Origin, we head back to Port Canaveral, where there is an odd barge which has a structure on top of it made primarily of shipping containers. On the end of the barge, we can see two interesting structures which are around 7 meters in diameter, the perfect size for New Glen. Any ideas what they could be? Let us know in the comments. Next up at Relativity's LC-16, we can see via the NOAA aerial imagery that the site looks to be in good shape after Ian, with only some minor flooding. On October 4th, Relativity tweeted out their current to-do list. Integration, 
static fire, and then make history. This is of course the most exciting part, launch of a brand new rocket. First flights are always exciting, and this one is even more so, as it could very well be the first orbital launch of a methane-fueled rocket. Check out our recent video on the race to launch the first Methalox rocket to orbit, link in the description. We're all super excited to watch this new vehicle come online and embark on its first ever flight, so be sure to stay tuned for our coverage of that. Alright, that's it for this flyover. Thanks for watching.